Look, as supply chain problems continue across the globe, the ongoing computer chip shortage having a major impact on Ford's vehicle production. So yesterday, the company had announced it is suspending or slowing production now at several of its factories in North America because of the short supply. So those computer chips, they control just about everything in modern cars, from rolling down the windows to turbo boost and much more as well. And it is no secret the supply chain crisis, it has caused madness all across the country. Ports on the West Coast Dealing with congestion, which resulted in a delay in getting those products out into the stream of commerce and the shelves, as you know, being bare at times. But look, right here in Baltimore, our port, they're well ahead of the game. Only WJZ got rare access in the middle of a workday, a glimpse into how it is one of the smoothest running ports in the entire world. From the outside looking in, it's a routine day for the Port of Baltimore. But down on the front lines, you're quickly in awe of a workflow that is anything but normal. While the supply chain crisis in the U.S. has rocked ports along the West Coast, our backyard is smooth sailing. Here, the cargo volumes are up. The ships are getting turned around. We don't we don't have any ships waiting, like they do in other ports. Only WJZ got exclusive access behind the gates. It's a port that is wheeling and dealing in a wide variety. You have everything from grain to Under Armour clothes, to Heineken beer. We are the number one largest importer and exporter of automobiles. Bill Doyle, the port's executive director, credits the consistency to being ahead of the game. What we've done, what we've prepared for. In the port of Baltimore over the past 10 years, larger cranes. We've dredged the port so that we can get the larger ships. Along with a slew of distribution centers at its disposal. Retailers, Amazon, Home Depot, Florin Decor, Kirkland Costco, they all built distribution centers in and around the port so that we can receive the ships, get them into the distribution centers. Mix in the pandemic and a boom in e commerce, it's an unprecedented demand Baltimore is capitalizing on. <laughs> So of course you're wondering, what's the production for a typical day? Per hour, workers are doing upwards of 45 containers on and off vessels. And each of those can weigh anywhere from 5 to 50 tons. So when it's all said and done, three to 4,000 containers are coming in and out of this port every day. The craziness that we're seeing right now, have you ever seen anything like this before? When I started on the, on the docks and I joined the local, it was 700 people. Now we have 1,700. A workforce that's represented by Union President Scott Callen, one often clocking 20 hour days. It's a very good problem to have. It puts a lot of people to work with good family sustaining jobs, and that's what's very important. Providing their workers with the best equipment possible, and that includes a set of new cranes debuting in just weeks. Th these new cranes are higher, they're faster, they're more technologically advanced. Many people don't realize how. how much the longshoremen and even the trucking community do to keep these things moving. No port, I don't care who you are, no port can survive without their truckers. A reminder that Baltimore is stronger than ever. If it's not working on another port, you give me a call and we'll get it done. All right, the one thing that these guys kept stressing how none of the port's success, and they're having a lot of it, is possible without the great workers and the trucking community. Last year, the ILA and its workers, they clocked more than 3 million hours. You talk about those 20 hour days that they're doing. Yeah, I mean, it's something we didn't think much about until this pandemic hit when we realized, okay, things are not coming as they should, it's a great point. right? The trucks are, are, are tr people are out of sight, out of Yeah, mind. we didn't think about it. But a good point that you made or that we should raise in this story. People are seeing this and saying, okay, Baltimore Port thriving, right? right? Why are we still having shortages or seeing things on the shelves where we want them to be, but they're not quite there yet? Or our packages are still delayed? And it's a great question. Maybe your produce isn't on the shelves. You're seeing some bare shelves with that specifically. And he said, look, that's not a port problem. Not all, but most produce grown inside the U.S., so they're not dealing with that. Mm -hmm. And your packages may be delayed, or you are seeing those shelves that are bare. Those products for that specifically, Maybe coming in on a port on the West Coast. Yeah. And that's why they're delayed. And that's why Bill Doyle was like, hey, we're open for business. We want more people to start using yeah, us. Yeah, all depends on where you order from, where it's coming from, and all that good stuff. Stuff you never thought about. We love before. that. Thanks for that breakdown, Rick. <laughs> the more you know.